Global markets rattled today by uncertainty as President Trump threatens to impose higher tariffs on China. There's the big board in New York there. The Dow down more than 200 points. It was worse earlier today. That wipes out just a chunk of the stock market's recent surge. The market's responding to new fears that China and the United States could now be headed for an escalated trade war. The president tweeting over the weekend threatening to hike a 10% tariff on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods way up to 25% as soon as this Friday. President Trump hitting the issue again today, tweeting, the United States has been losing for many years. Sorry, we're not going to be doing that anymore. Now, the timing here is no coincidence. U.S. and Chinese negotiators are due to resume talks this week. Those talks still on the books, but it's now unclear if China's chief negotiator will attend. Uh, so the question here is um, why? Uh, in the sense that if you're the president, uh, you've been saying for weeks, you think you're on track to a deal, and now you're kind of blowing it up a little bit. Why? Like the key in the tweets from the weekend where he said something about renegotiate the terms in one of those tweets, and he was referring right. to China. Um, my understanding from people in the administration is that he has been led to believe, either by Bob Lighthizer or by others, um, that China was balking on certain things that they had agreed to as they were heading into this meeting. And it is not a surprise, the president, knowing his MO, that um, he's looking to sort of pull this back and not allow somebody to claim that they had a victory over him. There is obviously a possibly short term, maybe longer than that uh, problem in terms of the stock market. You're seeing the markets react. We don't know how long it will go. What I think the president has come to see is that he has been warned repeatedly the market will tumble when you do tariffs, when you do X, Y, Z, and it does, and then it comes back. And so I think that he believes he's going to weather this and see what happens. I don't know whether there's some long-term strategy here. I don't think there is. I think that this caught a lot of people by surprise, but for those who have been attached to these trade discussions, it's not much of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, and, and to that point, I just want to jump in at the choice. Is, is this the, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty moment for the president, who has long believed, way before he got into politics, that China's been cheating. Raping is the word he uses, the United States for 20 right. plus years. And so the question is, if you're the Trump political team heading into re-election, you see 3.6 percent unemployment, you see the economy growing at 3.2 percent, you see 103 consecutive months of job growth, you say, Mr. President, don't mess with this trophy. That is a beautiful trophy. If you are Peter Navarro or Robert Lighthizer, those who, like the president, think you got to go big and don't sign a deal unless you get the intellectual property business done and other other the the bigger structural issues with China done don't just get more soybean ex soybean exports mm -hmm. don't just let US cars go into China you got to go big you say mr president the economy's strong enough to take the hit right. to your point right. that we could take the hit the question is if you're taking a hit heading into the reelection season that would be it it's a bold risk for the president and, if you're willing to play that long and which way uh, the long term game I, I think is that it will re rebound right. and China being such an important part of his political message in 2016 and will again be in 2020 if he gets, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a bad deal or, or deal that he can't sell. So I think that's what he's he's aiming at right now. But the politics on this are all scrambled where Chuck Schumer is that's cheering him on yeah. and, right. you know, soybean <laughs> futures are, are down in a major way that's giving, uh, you know, Chuck Grassley and Joni Ernst in Iowa, mm -hmm. you know, problems, you know, so I, I, where this heads in the short term is, is really hard to predict. Yeah, but to, to Maggie's point too earlier, that he's been warned repeatedly that mantle, that economic mantle you showed there, right. is going to be wiped around, wiped out by whether it's that escalating tariff war, whether it's about shutting down the government for the longest period in, in American history, and has not happened to what everybody's warned him about. Now we're seeing very low unemployment, the GDP numbers very positive. So if he believes that he can sustain a short-term fight and that could lead to markets tumbling for a short term, it could just rebound, he could have something to run on on the China deal and listen to those concerns by the Chuck Grassley's and Joni Ernst of the world and say, listen, you can be concerned now, but in the later, you'll be fine. Look what happened months ago. But many of the president's uh, economic advisors are telling him that the goal is not a deal. The goal is to have the right deal. And that's why I think this has yeah. gone on for so long. And in a somewhat revealing comment, I think, at the White House on Friday, the president's uh, economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, said the president views tariffs as a negotiating mm -hmm. ta tactic. Mm -hmm. They're not simply a matter of principle for him, but he uses them in negotiations to get the other party to where he wants them to go. And that's why I think you're seeing the threat used right now as we near the, what is supposed to be the end of negotiations of this China deal. And, and you, you see this happening, and just help me, because I've been at this a while, and so sometimes I get, you get a little nervous when you look at the headlines. Amid trade tensions, U.S. warships challenge Chinese claims in South China Sea. Citing Iranian threat, U.S. sends carrier group and bombers to the Persian Gulf. U.S. warns China, Russia, against aggression in the Arctic region. Uh, we seem to be getting, beginning the week 
with sort of a muscular front on several, muscular approach on several fronts. Well, what I think is so interesting about those headlines is that this is a president who is, you know, on the more isolationist side of the ledger, who doesn't like these sorts of muscular use of, of American force, certainly not the deployment of troops overseas, but he's got a raft of advisors who, uh, who really like those sorts of things. And so I think these sorts of moves, which fall short of the deployment of American troops, and that tend to fly under the radar, they're not the subject of tons of news headlines that reach the president, at least, um, are OK by him. But we know that when there was lots of talk, tough talk last week about Venezuela, lots of threats of military intervention, the president got frustrated because he ultimately doesn't want to uh, deploy troops. He doesn't want to have uh, a war to his name the way the past several presidents have had to theirs.